everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. This DIY has been long awaited. I've been in my house for quite some time and I want to do a complete DIY kitchen reno. So I'm starting with my kitchen island. This project has put me through so much hell, but I'm here to show you the real things that go successfully, things that don't. Uh, we're gonna embark on this kitchen journey by getting rid of this kitchen island because it has really been getting on my nerves for the past eight years, nine years almost, and I'm just ready to have it get a fresh new look. I don't quite have my whole plan worked out, so maybe that's where I ran into this big issue at, but we're gonna work it out somehow. Right now, I still don't know everything <laughs> that I'm gonna do to get this right, but just hang in there with me. Hopefully you will enjoy the process. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And let's hop right on into this nonsense. Here's what we're starting out with. This is the kitchen island. I really don't like the way it looks. The distressing is a little bit too much for me and it really doesn't match with anything that's in my kitchen currently. Not quite sure how this de design choice was made, but it does provide me with plenty of good storage, which I'm gonna lose in this video, unfortunately, but that's okay because I just wanted to have a more aesthetically pleasing look. It's too big to fit through any of my doorways to get it out of here. I don't wanna chop it into a million pieces and totally dismantle it. So I'm just going to try to refinish it as it is and I am going to start out by cleaning it off. Here's another look at the top. So it's a nice piece. It just doesn't fit with my vibe. This trim doesn't allow my new pieces to lay flat. So I'm going to remove it with a hammer, a small screwdriver and a five in one tool. I'm just going to start out by finding an area that I can lift out. So I started with this little corner area and then I'm going to just work and work and work and hurt my elbows and break a nail and hurt my wrist <laughs> until I'm able to pry a piece off. And I thought that would make getting the rest of it off once I kind of got a corner up, but I should have probably had some better tools for this. I could not find my crowbar for anything. So I just went ahead and did this, but after removing a couple of sides, I had to take a break. So on my break, I went to Home Depot and I got some of these tongue and groove boards. I like them because they're solid wood and they have a nice little bead detail, which I think would really look good and make it more modern in my kitchen. I started out by going to Lowe's to get the 12 foot boards, but when I got there, there were only like two boards that weren't damaged. So I ended up going to Home Depot for the eight foot boards, which cost me a lot more money and ruined my calculations. You'll see how that affects the project later in the video, but um, this guy was super nice and really helpful and he at least cut down the boards to the uh, appropriate length that I needed, so I was really grateful for that. So here's how the boards look up close. They have a tongue on one side, a groove on the other, and they kind of just snap together. So since the guy in Home Depot cut them for me, I was able to just come home and lay them out and go ahead and start to prime me. So I'm just doing one coat of primer just to kind of seal some of these knots as you can see, it's really knotty on this on these panels, but that's okay because I'm going to be painting them and I'm just going to start out by priming. This is the Ben Shellac primer that I always use and I'm spraying with my Wagner Flexio 3500, which I always use as well. Here's how everything looks all primed. Now I'm painting everything with Fusion's Coal Black. And I'm just going to go ahead and do one coat on these. I know I probably have to do some touch-ups once I get them installed, but I'm okay with that. I just kind of wanted to get a head start on the painting so I wouldn't have to roll two coats. While my paint is drying, I'm going back to removing this trim. And as you can see, this is attached by a billion nails. So this was a lot of work to remove these, but I just put on some YouTube and just sat down and kind of got to it. And it took me about four hours to remove all this trim. As you can see, the middle part of these doors kind of protrudes. So I thought I was going to have to cut it out, but I just ended up removing the doors instead. And I'm also going to remove the hardware that I've been hating for all this time as well. I'm starting out the next day by going ahead and attaching my panels. And I 
am not comfortable on the table saw at all. So when I'm using it, I tend not to want to film because I want to focus and make sure I can walk away with the same amount of fingers that I approached the saw with. So I did manage to get some good 45 degree angles, which surprised me a lot. And now I'm using one inch brad nails to secure the panels on top of the island. As you can see, the previous shape was kind of diagonal on the corners and I never liked that. So I'm going to use this opportunity to square everything off. I think this small change will help to update the look as well. This would have been so much easier if I had had somebody to hold this for me while I nail it but I don't, so I'm just going for it. So you can do this by yourself if you have to. You don't have another person to help you. I tend to prefer DIYing by myself just because other people's inputs can sometimes make me feel discouraged or make me feel like I don't have the abilities to do things. So I just kind of zone out and DIY by myself and I find that I always get things done in a way that is pleasing for me. I did everything I could to avoid losing the storage short of hiring another person to help me. And as you can see, my cuts were just slightly off each time I tried. I went through a few planks until I just accepted defeat and then removed all the junk from the drawers and the doors and just decided to panel over them. Truth be told, I don't need this storage space even though I would really have liked to keep it, but it was costing me a lot of money to burn through these planks, which are not that cheap. And I just decided to let it go. I have a whole room dedicated to my furniture flipping stuff and storage and all my tools and all that jazz. So if I arrange that room and kind of consolidate it, all these things have a place in there. These are just the things that I reach for a lot when I'm furniture flipping and a couple of paints that I just have not moved. They're probably actually dried out by now, <laughs> but the storage was convenient, but I'm okay with losing it, even though I would have liked to keep it. This just made me have to clean up, which is something that I really didn't want to do. <laughs> so now that I've accepted defeat in the area of being able to make these drawers usable, I just continued to install a couple planks, and then it dawned on me that I probably should start removing the top. I don't know why this dawned on me at this point, but since I was sure that the paneling was going pretty okay, I decided to try to go ahead and see what other problems I would encounter. I didn't want to install a whole side of paneling and then have an issue. So I decided to stop with the panels and go ahead and try to pry off the top. Now, if there were um, hundreds of nails securing that trim, there must have been thousands securing this top and I just was not able to get any leverage to try to get one of the corners up so I just decided to go ahead and cut it like I've been spending a lot of time on this island already and money and I just didn't want to have to deal with it so I just decided to cut one of the planks I wanted to make sure that I didn't completely ruin this because this is solid cedar and I can reuse it but I had to do what I had to do in this case so I was able to get one corner off and then I was able to kind of use my hammer and pry one piece up. And then after that, I was able to kind of get enough leverage and figure out how this was put together well enough to go ahead and remove the whole top. I was trying so hard not to have to use the saw in my kitchen because now I have a huge mess to clean up of sawdust on top of all the crap that I took out of the drawers and doors on here. But it is what it is. At this point, at least I'm making progress. That's what I kept telling myself. So for everybody who always leaves comments on DIYers channels like, oh, you make it look so easy, it's not always easy. And we do encounter a lot of struggles, particularly a person like myself who is filming and doing the actual work by themselves. It comes with a lot of hurdles. So, so sometimes we'll kind of just cut that out so we can get to the point. But in this video, I really want to show like exactly what I had to go through to do this. Hopefully nobody will comment anything about how beautiful my hair looks and about how <laughs> wonderful my clothes look because I'm just trying to work y'all. This ain't a fashion show so don't come for me. This is real raw and uncut, okay? So while you're watching me have a, a full struggle and a partial mental health breakdown, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And if you like this kind of content, please hit the thumbs up button so that I will know to produce more like it. After about an hour of struggle, I was able to remove the top and then I went back to doing the paneling.
After getting around to this other side, I discovered that there was nothing for me to nail into. So I salvaged a piece from the trim that was previously on here and I just cut it to fit into this little area. And then I attached that with nails and then I was able to continue adding panels down this side. Here's where things started to go left. I saw this photo and I thought it would be nice to have this area that's kind of like an eating surface where you can sit and have your bar stools. And I like the fact that it protruded on the sides. I knew that I would need some kind of support for the top of the island to sit on for this part that hangs over. So I built a rectangle out of two by threes. Fairly simple. I just nailed it together. Uh, a piece across at the top, a piece across at the middle, and a piece across at the bottom. And so I'll panel over this as well. One, I don't have enough panels to do this because this is a last minute add-on. And so I'm going to have to go back to the store to get more panels. And two, at this point, I have already cut my top based off of not having this overhang. So I'm feeling like I might be kind of screwed, but I'm going to see what happens. All right, so I saw this table on Facebook Marketplace reasonably priced for 60 bucks, and I thought that's cheaper than any butcher block I'm ever going to find, which was my original idea. So I got this tabletop, and I decided that I was going to use this for my island top. However, my cut did not account for the overhang that I want now. So my niece and I have this, and we're just kind of trying to turn it each way and see exactly what we have at this point and what we can do to salvage this. Okay, so as you can see, I've royally messed up. I cut this piece too short. I changed my design plan about halfway through my process and I, I have already purchased this piece. And so I thought I could still make it work. But when I went to cut it, my cuts were off, my measurements were off. Something just went wrong. Normally, I am never that far off. So I am going to have to rethink my plan. Do I keep this and try to salvage it and come up with some creative way to tie it into my kitchen? Or do I scrap it and start over and pay more money? So my inclination is to try to work with it, but I'm not quite sure how I could do that. So this is gonna be my first ever to be continued video. And hopefully you will come back next week to see what I think up. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. And wish me luck, give me ideas of how I can fix this in the comment section if you have any. I'll see you guys next week. Let me tie this all in before I wrap up this video. This is where we are now. I've got three sides completely paneled. Um, due to my math error, Lowe's not having the 12 foot boards that I wanted and accounted for and did my math by, and me messing up some of the boards with trying to cut out the drawers and the doors. I'm short a lot of boards, so I have to go to get more of the paneling. And due to my math errors and my design plan change, my top is too short as well. So come back next week to see exactly how this goes. If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen or in the description box below. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.